So hi everyone, it's Elaine here from Cerebra and I'm really happy today to be joined by Lisa, Lisa Reeks. Hi Lisa, how are you? I'm all right, thank you. Hello. Good, good. And, and Lisa's just uh, written and published um, a book and um, it's called Reflections of Grief and it's a, a parent carer story and it, it really tells in a very honest um, way her experience um, of dealing with the sudden illness of her daughter at the age of two, uh, resulting in lifelong disability. Um, and it's an honest account, I think it's fair to say, Lisa, of, of how you came to cope and to manage to a really difficult, challenging time, and not just at the time, but in the, in the years following. So thank you for joining me to have a, have a chat about it. Um, so... Just, can you just introduce yourself, just you and, and your daughter Poppy, and just tell us a little bit about you? Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm um, a lone parent carer. Um, my daughter's now 17. Um, she had a stroke at two. Um, so her difficulty stemmed from um, an acute illness so uh, that was from E. coli um, that turned developed into this thing that affects your blood vessels. So as part of that illness, she had a stroke um, and that resulted in um, a form of cerebral palsy called left hemiplegia. Um, so that affects one side of her body. Um, later on, she developed um, seizures. Um, so it's, it's been a, um, an, an evolving story over the years. Um, as I said, I'm a lone parent carer. So um, that's, you know, has its um, presents itself with its challenges um yeah I think that's that's mainly what I do I do other things as well but um yeah that that's my main role oh gosh I had a bit of a shock when you said that she was 17 because yeah. in my head she's still a little girl <laughs> and she's all grown up <laughs> yes yeah she's now at college yeah yeah brilliant so obviously that's 15 years ago that that this happened um yeah. what what led you to want to to write the book? What was sort of driving you to do it? Yeah, um, that's a good question. So um, there's a few things. One, um, I was encouraged to do so by different people within my life, you know, um, just talking to different people, they'd say, gosh, you know, that's that's an incredible story. Um, it's it's not the most usual. Um, um, I do think that parent carers do have quite unusual you know lives and stories but um perhaps there was something about my particular story that seemed unusual um I felt I had something to share and it, it came at a point where we'd gone through tribunal to get my daughter into um sort of a very, very special special school from mainstream where she was really struggling and um that uh, required her to board Monday to Friday so that was a really big transition for us um but that that boarding um situation meant that I had some time during the week um mm -hmm. while she was at this school to reflect um so I did feel that I had something to share that I had something to say um I was very intentional that I I really wanted to talk very much about how that how it felt um I having gone through this process I do feel like um if we all talked a little bit more, not that I want to tell people what to do, but if we all talked a little bit more about how we felt, we'd understand that we have a lot more in common than actually what we really felt, you know, what we think. Um, and as a parent carer, I think it can be quite easy to feel ashamed, maybe perhaps of some, you know, dark feelings we might have, or you're afraid that our feelings might be taken the wrong way and it might lead to serious consequences. Um, so I, I really wanted to be open and honest about how I felt, you know, um, yeah, to, to lead to that, us feeling more, more connected overall. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Sorry, I'd, I'd written down a few things um, okay. to remind me and I've covered them all. So oh, brilliant. I think that's really interesting what you just said, because I think we do have a tendency to just carry on and get things done and because we've got to be practical and we've got to we've got to move things on and we've got to just, absolutely and we don't express 
how we're feeling certainly perhaps not to the world at large yeah um and it, it sort of creates an almost false sense then doesn't it you you can think that well this is just me you know everybody else is fine and dealing with it so why am I this and, and actually I think everybody is struggling to, to some extent and it's yeah. being open and honest I think there's a as you say if we could all be a bit more honest and there is support in that yes yeah and I, it does I must admit it it does make me feel um because it's a very personal story and I do talk about some aspects of my my experience of mothering uh, or being mothered <laughs> um, and uh, some aspects of my past and, and my core beliefs as well. It is very personal to me. So it does feel that it does. I have quite a lot of apprehension. <laughs> I'll be honest with you about yeah. sharing the story. It makes me feel quite vulnerable. But again, I, yeah. I do feel this sort of need to do that for whatever reason that you know that there is um yeah a need to just just to be open and honest and and to to potentially be open to um lots of different types of um opinions and you know perhaps yes. criticism but but to do that because i i feel that that's just needed yeah i think it's the way forward to be more open about how we're feeling yeah yes so towards the be the beginning of the book, when you're talking, you know, about Poppy's illness and, and that time, which was incredibly traumatic and sort of the, the whole range of emotions that you were experiencing and just the, yeah. the, the trauma of it. And you speak about the emptiness and the loneliness. I mean, those are really powerful things to talk about and they aren't things that people tend to talk about yeah just I think what resonated with me was sort of you talk about being overwhelmed by the responsibility now that your yes. life changed <laughs> you know in in a blink of an eye really yeah um and as I say it's important to convey that sadness and sorrow and the sense of grief really so I mean that that continues throughout the book really doesn't it you know mm -hmm. have emotions as you've gone through each stage yeah. so so more or less beginning with, with Poppy at the age of two and her illness. Can you just give us a, an, an overview of what the, the book covers, really? Yeah, so uh, my daughter uh, and I both went to um, hospital in Bristol. I live, I live in Somerset. Um, <laughs> and obviously we were in that process. Um, I didn't really understand, I'll be completely honest with you, what to a great degree was going on. I think part of that is just the sheer shock. Um, your child is desperately ill. Um, there was a point where I didn't know whether I was going to see her again. That was extremely traumatic. Um, yeah. And that's that's still traumatic to me <laughs> today. Yes. Um, yes. Just the memory of that. Um, so she spent um, several weeks in hospital. Um, and even when she was discharged um, after having had a stroke. So within five days, she'd mm -hmm. got desperately ill and, and had her stroke. And then she was sort of recovering after that. Yes. But there's permanent brain damage. So I, again, I didn't really understand what that meant um, and how that would affect our lives, but it was life-changing absolutely from, from that moment, um, mm -hmm. from her having ha her stroke, um, coming home and, and having that, that slow dawning of, you know, I, there's a lot of responsibility here. Yeah. Um, even having, you know, the physio come round and showing me what exercises I had to do with my daughter. And then the, the realization that actually yeah. I, I had to administer that. I, yeah, that was, that felt like a really big responsibility. Um, I did also feel a very strong sense of, um, I guess trying to fix her, you know, find it feeling like it was my responsibility to try to do that, which um, I realize is completely, you know, that is that is entirely not possible at all. And, and that was responsibility I put on myself um, that probably made that feel a lot heavier at the time. Um, but as with, with regard to the grief, um, yes, that was very much a process that evolved because you're so con your time is so taken up with the nuts and bolts of I've got to do this, I've got to do that, and feeling that pressure to make a difference, um, feeling like your your child's um, 
health and ability entirely is rests on how much physio do you do how much ot yeah. you do all of those things um was was a massive responsibility so i couldn't really grieve actually in at that, at that time when i felt like i was really in the thick of the do 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 you know yeah, yeah. um but it, it took a massive toll on my physical uh, well-being um my nervous system was completely shot i was trying to work at the time as well it was just very busy i was very very overwhelmed um very confused probably most of the time <laughs> um just living really hand to mouth um so grieving happened when my daughter went to her father's um, I did a lot of an awful lot of crying. I can remember crying for almost an hour, constantly, absolutely crying my eyes out. Just yeah. really, just mostly, just extremely sad. Yes, really. Yes. Just I can't really even now put into words just how sad no. I felt. No, yes, um, it's and, impossible to explain, isn't it? Yeah, it's really hard to put into words. And I guess the book is my trying. <laughs> trying yeah. to mm. yeah because as I say you you talk incredibly honestly so how did it feel to write it because you know as we were chatting earlier before we started sort of recording this we were saying you know that it's it's involved reliving some things it's probably brought back a lot of memory things that happened before you had Poppy so, yes yeah so what was what was the process like for you sort of putting this together yeah it was very cathartic in many ways um mm. I think um during this process or of being a parent carer I, I've been triggered many times or that trauma has been triggered and and yeah. um through different experiences but absolutely um you know I I did look back at photographs of that time yeah. um and yes i i still i cried again <laughs> i can't i can't deny it yeah. um i can see that my grief is evolving um yes i i have reflected on um elements of you know how i was mothered and how that has affected how i i mother um so that's been really interesting just just you know what what is in the book is like i say some very personal moments some very personal yeah. stuff that's that to do with me in my past um and i wanted to convey definitely that we we can tend to sort of com com compartmentalize things mm -hmm. and think well that's that and this is this and it's different but actually it's all the same thing so we you know yeah. if i grieve about something to do with poppy then maybe i'll be grieving something about a previous relationship or something to do with my you know how i was parented it's 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 the way of life it's it's the yeah. way it works and actually I think that's a very natural process and not yes. to try to sort of stop it or inhibit it just to go with it and see things for our lives we're all connected yes ultimately. absolutely as you say nothing exists in isolation does it no. all connected so and and the process that you're going through will I'm sure continue to evolve yeah. uh, I don't think there ever is an end is there it just no just changes yeah so what do you hope that the book will will give to others what do you what you what's, what's your hope for it yeah my hope for it is um i think it is an insight into a very unique experience um i'm a parent carer and i don't wish to speak for anybody else but um i also think that there's there will be some shared experience within my experience that other people might identify yeah. with perhaps identifying with some of those feelings that I've expressed that makes hopefully people feel like they're not alone and it's, it's okay to have those feelings. Mm. It doesn't necessarily, if maybe if they're darker feelings, it doesn't make you necessarily a bad person or that you have, you know, something very seriously wrong with you. It is literally just, we have so many thoughts and feelings. And I, I do believe that they're all legitimate. It's just what we do with those feelings, how those mm. then go on to, how we treat others or what we say or, or what our actions are yeah. and so just being very aware and conscious of those um that um as i said it's an experience that many people may identify with um it is ultimately about grief and i think we all experience grief whether young old you know whatever gender we are or, or wherever our background there will always be things that happen in our lives where we feel a sense of loss and this is just one particular story Yes. um of of many 
Um, but that is a universal story. We, we all experience those types of feelings of, of loss and we grieve. Um, and again, it's, it's my hope would be that people feel connected, that, you know, they don't feel alone, that, you know, we are having this amazing experience. <laughs> um, yeah. And perhaps a different way of, um, of viewing grief. Um, I can't deny that in the beginning, I was entirely stuck in self-pity for quite a number of years. And I could not get myself out of it. I was just stuck in that moment. Um, I could sense that other people wanted me to move on, but I, I just could not no. um, for one reason or another. I think it's a process. I wasn't ready, mm. but that changed. Um, perhaps that will be of some comfort to some people wherever they are in their journey that things do change. We do evolve. Um, we do feel differently over time. Um, and that is comforting. We can still be triggered, but you know, time is is a great healer. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and I I do talk about my I personally practice yoga, and um, okay. that is has been a I think I word it in the book as a great friend to me. Um, mm -hmm. And I am interested in the philosophy that sits behind yoga. So, mm -hmm. um, and it is about seeing life for what it is. Um, and I think that's definitely helped me on my journey. I'm certainly not saying that everybody should go out and practice yoga, but having those bigger, having a bigger view has definitely yes. helped me to see the meaning in my experience, yes. I guess. And, I, and that's what I've tried to convey is, is, um, you know, this, this particular event happened to me, but how was I prepared for that? In my in my in my time before that you know what skills did I think I could bring to this particular experience and then equally what have I learned since then so it's definitely a I feel a, a story of sort of transformation or evolution yeah. um yeah looking at it from that perspective that yes. it's not it this experience doesn't necessarily have to define me all that I am I am lots of different things and yeah. and we all are yeah Absolutely. So one of the questions I was going to ask you is what has helped you um, along the way? And you've, you've mentioned yoga. Um, is yeah. there anything, anything else that you you feel has, has been of benefit? Because you talk as well in the book about um, the struggle you had to change Poppy's school, you know, to, to get where she needed to be. Yeah. It's how you... How you channel that great determination and resolve and that fight, I guess, when you're still feeling so obviously um, so traumatised, emotional, sad, overwhelmed. You know, they're, they're like two flips of, of a mm. So yeah. how, how did you manage to do that? What helped you to do that, do you think? Um, I think having got to a point of acceptance, Absolutely. Um, for me not to feel quite so identified with how I was feeling, as I said, I think you can, there's always the potential for you to be triggered in different situations and things like that. But to have a little bit of distance, as I said, yoga has helped me to see a bigger picture, mm -hmm. see things just as an evolving story, rather than being quite so identified. Um, on a day to day, I do, I have absolutely increased my, my self care. I've mm -hmm. come to understand that actually it's it, it can be very tempting to put all of your energy into caring because obviously you love the person you're caring for and you yes. absolutely want um, the, the, very, the very best for them, you know. Yeah. And it can sometimes feel sort of almost selfish to um, invest time in yourself. But I've come to realise that actually if I'm not in my very best mental, physical, spiritual state, Mm -hmm. then I actually I'm not in the best position to um, serve that particular purpose which is a very obviously at my main my main purpose in life is to um, is to care for my daughter so my self-care is is absolutely key and, and it is very simple things getting enough sleep eating good food um, I now don't do the things that I would consider perhaps to be a crutch or something that I go to to help me feel like I'm coping in that situation but either over long term I realize that actually it's detrimental to my health whether that's physically or mentally or whatever um so I have I have learned that it did take me <laughs> a 
<laughs> some years <laughs> but um and, and like I say, my yoga practice is 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 really um, is a is a core part of me personally looking after myself. Lots of walks in nature, but and yeah. that has helped me to um, to focus. And um, definitely going through tribunal to get my daughter into the school that she is now, um, I definitely felt like I had to channel to just really focus my intention on that outcome. Yeah. And from my point of view, that was the only outcome that it that could that was yes. that that would be supported and it was we were very lucky yeah. um so yeah making sure i i juggle my self-care having that determination and um yoga does help you channel your sort of your mind let's put it that way in that yes. direction and again not not take it personally yeah. it's just a process it's just a system i was just in a process yeah. don't take it personally yeah, yeah. And I guess as well, it's still allowing yourself to experience these emotions because I think, you know, the more we bottle things up, the more we yeah. bend deep, then the more problems they cause. If not now, then, you know, in the days ahead. So yeah. I guess it, it's it's accepting them, dealing with them, yeah. assessing them so that, that yeah. you can move on. Yes. And I do. Uh, one thing I do do as well as I, I do journal. So um, okay. I don't necessarily talk about or write about what I've done. I may do, but it's more about how I felt about it. And yes. um, again, there's a practice within my yoga practice, which is called pranayama, which is a form of breath control. And um, I will spontaneously cry during that practice. And I can't actually explain what it does, but it I feel that it's helping me to process deep feelings and mainly feelings, not even thoughts, because sometimes mm -hmm. I, I'll cry and I don't even really know what I'm crying about, but there'll be something. So that having that daily practice really yes. does help. And there'll always be surprises and there'll always be days that you're caught unaware. Yeah. And, but yeah. um, trying yeah. to do that regular stuff, I, yes. I found very helpful. Brilliant. So what's next <laughs> now that you've you've written the book what are your best hopes now for oh my gosh uh that's forward. a really good question um I do feel like I have more to write mm -hmm. um I'm not quite sure what direction that will be whether it will be something fictional or whether it will be something again that will be more personal um I am very interested in sort of how we process trauma yeah um so I don't I'm not quite sure but obviously juggling lots of different things and I, yes. I will admit there's there's an awful lot happening at the moment um yeah. and I have various different things that I do so yeah yeah perhaps I I think I will be writing something else I'm not sure when not sure but, what, somewhere. yeah but it's yeah. not it's not moving forward isn't it well, yeah 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 so the book is called reflections of grief a parent carer story and yes. you tell people where they can get a copy where is it for sale yes yeah, so it is um you will find it on the waterstones website yeah um and um if anybody would like to contact me directly i'm happy to um i have some copies myself so if anybody would like to contact me directly, then I'm happy to um, post one out directly, which will save a lot of sort of um, carbon footprint and all of that malarkey. Oh, so no, I'm, I'm happy for that as well. Thank you. So just to, to finish up. Um, oh, I don't know. I don't know how to, how to put this best. Sort of what would be if you could only convey one thing to other people who are, are in a similar situation to yourself? what would it be what would that one thing that you would want them to know well oh, that is very good um yeah. I think <laughs> one. take one day at a time um it might just be that just take one day yeah. at a time acknowledge where you are try not to be too self-judgmental or critical you know because we can give ourselves such a hard time when actually we're doing so well and we're doing our best and actually our best is all we can expect of ourselves um yeah and try to see things as they are but yeah take take every day and you know if that means that you're going to throw a wobbly that day do you know what don't give yourself a hard time that's just what needs to come out that's what needs to be expressed 
how you express it. <laughs> Try to do that in the most healthy way. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, it you know, we do need to feel what we're feeling um, to get through where we are. But um, and uh, yes, if anybody's in a, a similar situation as me, is is just um, yeah, know that you are probably doing the absolute best that you possibly can, and you know what that is as good as you can do. Oh, well, it's been really lovely to chat with you. And you. I, I found the book incredibly powerful to read. Um, Thank you. You've done a great deal of service by lifting that lid off. Um, and I think that, you know, from my perspective, that will help um, people just by you being honest about what you've experienced and, and what you're working through. So thank you for that. And thank you for talking to me today. Thank you. You're very welcome. Uh, and I just want to wish you and Poppy the best of everything moving forward, really. Oh, thank you so much. That's, uh, it's been such a pleasure. And uh, thank you so much for asking me. It's um, really an honour. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And, and good luck with the book. And I hope, you know, I hope lots of people get to read it. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.